I, I hate to be the one to tell you I told you so, but I told you. The old Candace is back. And I'm like, come on, fruit cook, yeah. I want to put my soap on, that's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Have and Have Nots. Listen, listen, listen. Like I said, the old Candace is back. Baby, she was ready for them. Candace went back to that, uh, to the hotel or the motel and went into the room where everything was going. You could see the bullet holes in the wall and the whole aftermath of what had actually happened. She had herself a little moment, asked God where was he at, didn't get the answers that she was looking for. She allowed that demon to come up and get back on her shoulder, baby. She left up out of there. Next thing you know, you seen her, she's in the hotel. She was laser focused, laser focused. And the thing is right before she left, the cops were actually, or right after she had left, while she was over at the motel, the cops had actually came to her room and went up in there searching for her and everything. And they were like, just, you know, you just missed her or whatever. That mess that Landon pulled. But I'll get to that in a minute. Anyway, she's coming, kind of, when she gets back, she sees Jeffrey in the, um, in the lobby and he's trying to talk to her he's like Candace are you okay she ain't said a word to Jeffrey she looked at him and kept right on moving went in the elevator went on that I ain't got nothing to say to you I'm talking right now she went on about her business she went up there she went to see Charles she busted up in the room on him Secret Service was telling her no ma'am get back to study other he come out was like let her in she went in there and asked him you know did you have something to do with this you know, I better not find out that you did this. And he's like, I would not do that. You know, this, that thing, the other. She's like, okay, fine. So she left. And he's like, well, she's like, child, out of my face. She left, went back over to her room. Goes over to her room. She ends up calling. Um, oh, she asked Charles for her phones back. He was trying to tell that story. She said, give me my phone. Gives her the phone. First person she calls standing in the hallway is Benny. She gets the voicemail. She leaves Benny a, 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 a voicemail. Tell him, call me. She goes in her room. She didn't want Charles. She get in there. She call her mama. And baby, she got Hannah on the phone. And Hannah's being all shady and hanky. And she told her, she said, so tell me what happened. Hannah, what did say? So she said, tell me what happened. Hannah tells her what happened. She says, well, where was he at when he got shot? She said, he was in the bathroom. So well, what was he doing in the bathroom? Well, I took him in the bathroom. She says, well, why didn't you protect him? Why would you take him in the bathroom? She said, he was shooting to, and fighting and, and whatnot. I took him into the bathroom. And she said, so why didn't you protect him? And she said, I did protect him. I was on top of that baby. She said, so why didn't you? You didn't protect my son, Hannah. You're a liar. You're lying and you're a liar. You didn't protect my son. He got shot and it should have been you that got shot and that was dead, not my son. Baby, she hung up on her. I said, oh, that was kind of rough. I don't know exactly how I felt about that, but that was kind of rough. I'm like, that's, but again, that's that dynamic. That's that Hannah and... Candace thing. It don't matter what what it is. They always going to be wrong in each other's eyes. And she went on from there. Next thing she did, she called Eric. She called she called Mitch. No, she called Erica first. She called Erica. She told Erica, er, you know, you know, um, I need I need you right now. So she tells Erica, I'm in room 3031. You know, Erica was just waiting on that information, baby. As soon as she hung up with Candace, she called Ward, says she's in room 3031. 
He talking about, I'll be there. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. And I'm like, but I don't know where Warren think he can ready to get up to her room, baby, with Secret Service off front, but they don't know that. But anyway, and Candace knew that, but whatever. So she goes, and I said, oh, as soon as she did it, I said, the old Candace is back, baby. She got a plan. She hung up that phone with Erica. She called Mitch. And, you know, this just made me even like Mitch even more, child. She called Mitch, and Mitch was like, Candace, and she's like, yeah. And she's like, um, you okay? She's like, mm. He's like, so you know, you heard. He's like, mm. so, so what you want to do? What do you want to do about it? She's like, I want him dead. And Mitch is like, okay, I'll take care of it. I said, oh, come on, Mitch. Chat that Mitch. Yes, indeed, honey. He said, I'll take care of it, honey. Get him here to the restaurant. Just like that. So I want him dead, honey. Get him to the restaurant. Okay, no problem. I like that, Mitch, honey. Anyway, so I knew then. I said, we're at the end of war. That's that's it. Ain't going to be no more war. That's going to be it. And remember, a couple episodes ago, they actually... Um, War wants some of Mitch and them anyway because he was asking where Mitch was. And they said he'd be down at his grandmother's restaurant. Remember that a couple episodes ago? So, yeah. So, um, anyway, War, uh, Erica comes up to the room. Her and Candace get to talk back and forth. Um, it's, Candace is asking her again about why she smelled like War. This, that thing, and the other. And she's over there telling her lies. And Candace is looking at her like, but I'm going to bust you in your mouth. Child, and they going back and forth, back and forth. And then she, um, Candace takes her phone out and she calls War. And they have this really strange, crazy conversation. He's like, you know, you got to die, right? She's like, mm -hmm. and he's like, you know, I know where you're at. She's like, mm -hmm, I'm sure you do. He's like, mm-hmm. She said, okay, well, you gonna wait for me? She's like, no, I'm not gonna wait for you. You wait, stay there and wait for me. She's like, mm -mm, no. Like, how do you finesse me into waiting for you to come kill me? Like, really? I said, he's crazy as shit. She's like, mm -mm, no, I'm not waiting on you. Fuck you. She hangs up. Then she tells Erica, take out your phone. She's like, I don't have nothing to do with war. You know, I'm scared to death of war. You know, this, that thing, and the other thing. Take out your phone. Sure enough, two seconds later, her phone started ringing, baby. She didn't want to answer. She said, answer it and answer it on the speaker. Well, she lucked out, baby. It was David. And she hurried up, rushed David off the phone. And after she gave some line about, oh, yeah, I'm sitting there with my girlfriend. I'm talking to her. No, I'm talking with my girlfriend. And she she is having trust issues. Just that, you know, a bunch of bull. She's like, mm hmm So she got David off the phone. She says, come on, let's go. She said, well, where are we going? She said, we're going to dinner. I said, oh, girl, she, <laughs> said, uh -oh. she done set you up, girl. You're getting ready to get popped. You don't even know it. I said, oh, good shit. I was so here for it. So here for it. Because she do need to die right beside war. She really does. And I'm here for it. Candace. That's what that's what I'm talking about. The old Candace. Two birds, one stone. Yes, everybody has to die. Everybody. I was so here for it. Okay, so hold on to that. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Beginning of the episode, child, we've seen this whole fake fire, which was really getting on my nerves. So they just set the crier house on fire. The fire looked so fake. And it was like the screen was separated. And I guess he was trying to give us two different views of the house. Like it, how much it was on fire. It was like burning from the front and burning from the back and on the set. It just looked a mess to me. It just looked fake and phony. Nobody came out. The fire department then showed up. No cops, no neighbors, no na Whatever, Tyler. Whatever. Anyway. Moving on. After that, you end up seeing um, Jeffrey and Landon are in the, the lobby talking. And Veronica comes up. And she's going to say, mm, Jeffrey, what have I told you about these girls? I said, oh, she's so ignorant. And she starts going back and forth with Jeffrey and tells Landon. Because Landon's still standing there looking at her. 
And, oh, Landon actually was going back and forth with Jeffrey before she walked up about how crazy that Justin was and all of that. Jeffrey's like, he's not crazy. He's all right. He's like, no, he's crazy. And you don't even realize you're in danger and all that. So Veronica um, and Jeffrey did apologize about Justin choking him out. But um, just like he was his man. Anyway, Veronica says, um, girl, don't you got to go somewhere and touch up your lipstick, honey? And baby, that damn Landon looked over at Veronica and said, no, I'm sure it looks better than your foundation. I said, oh, 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 oh Lord. He going to say, mm, I don't think so, girl. Scoot, girl, go away, honey. I said, oh, she, that Veronica is too many things. Landon rolled his eyes and walked on off. Veronica steady telling Jeffrey about how he going to go pick up uh, Melissa from the hospital and take her back to the house. And he's going back to the house this, that, thing, and the other. And he's like, don't, are you crazy? Like, don't you? That girl tried to kill her. So she said that girl was reaching out for some damn uh, attention. Ain't nobody think about her. She's carrying my grandchild. And you're going to be, you're going to watch over her and make sure she don't try to kill my grandchild again. And I said, oh, my God. He said, you don't even care. She said, no, I really don't. A mess. I don't know what Jeffrey's going to do because Jeffrey walked on off. Veronica went on off by her business. Then we had Landon and Charles got into it. And Charles told Landon, you come in here. Okay, brought him in the room, sent everybody else out, closed that door. Him and Landon got, got Landon got at it, baby. And they were going back and forth. And he said, I don't appreciate what you did. You called the police. And I told you to help her. I don't know what part of that you didn't understand. Honey, that Landon it's like why do you like her and he's like what he goes say i'm sorry with all due respect i just she's a low-level criminal he said well what if i were to tell you that i was a low-level criminal and he gonna say i wouldn't believe you he said well that's where you would be completely wrong now like i said i said help her that's what i said that's what i meant help her and landon was going on honey and he um Went to say one more thing to Charles, and baby Charles stepped up on him. I said, oh. And that Landon's eyes got just as big. I, I guess Landon said, I'm sick of this, honey. I done been choked out by Justin Timberlake. Now I'm getting ready to get all roughed up by I'll be sure I'm not going to do this. These uh, singer games. And he, he was like, okay, sir, I'm fine. And rolled on out of there. I said, this that's a mess. A mess. Let's go over to Wyatt's. Over at Wyatt, Wyatt is sitting there, and here comes George and Justin. They go over to the question, Wyatt. Now, this whole saying, it took too long. They were questioning Wyatt about everything and told him about um, the DA and how she got killed. He said, I thought she died. I didn't know she got murdered. And, there, and didn't, honey, Wyatt was like, well, my parents hated her. I, singing like a songbird. I said, look at him, child, singing like a canary. I said, that's a mess. And um, and he kept turning around looking at Justin. He was like, do he have to be here? I said, I don't like him. I don't like him. And I don't like how he treats my friends. And that, the cops were like, well, wait a minute. You know, the detective was like, what are you talking about? He said, I don't know what he's talking about. He's like, mm -mm, I don't want him here. I ain't going to keep talking. Y'all got him here. So they made Justin go out back to the car. And everything. I'm like, no, nah, ain't nobody going to question that. Whatever. And that was that. So why I continue singing like a songbird told him his parents are not good people. And yes, they did actually hate D.A. Styles and hate her. I said, oh, God, he's, I said, you're a mess. What? You are a mess. A hot mess. Anyway, moving on. So let's go back to Benny gets out of jail just like that. They let Benny go. Benny calls Hannah, tells Hannah to come and get him. He thought she like, all right, I'll be right there. Before she leaves on the TV, you got Charles is on and he's giving this speech and he starts talking about gun violence and this little boy and the young family, which he's personal friends with the young, you know, he's personal friends with the family who lost the little boy. And can we have a moment of silence for the little boy? And this, that, and the other, honey, and, Kay, and she was looking at the TV and her wheels were spinning like Benny. Candace, this bitch. I said, mm. and she looked around and went on out of there, honey, with the ugly pants on. I said, uh huh, a mess. So I think uh, 
Hannah had pretty much figured out pretty much a whole lot of what then went on. So she went on out the door going to go get Betty. Turns around in the meantime, between time, let's go over to the balloons. By this time, Candace and Erica have arrived at the restaurant. Mitch meets her right up front, looking fabulous. And I was like, okay, he rolled right out. Erica, just like she should, I'm going to go to the bathroom. She went to the bathroom and called war, naturally. He told, she did, so Candace told Mitch, he'll be here because she's going up in that bathroom and call her. And he's like, what? I told you you could trust that girl. She's like, I know. But he'll be here. So Mitch was like, all right. Gave her instructions, told her, when it start popping off, just get low. Get low. You know, he's like, I'm going to protect you, but just get low. Make sure you get low. So I laughed, honey. You could get, they did the little pan across of the restaurant, and you see all the Malones up in there, baby. I said, mm, mm. They panned across there, honey. Them dumb ghetto thugs came rolling up in there. Candace and Erica sitting across from each other at the table. Erica looking at the menu, just clueless. Next thing you know, war walks in, baby. And Candace sat up. Not Candace was sitting there like, mm -hmm, real unbothered. War sits down next to Erica on the other side of the table. And Erica's sitting up looking all smug. And Candace is like, yeah, bitch. I said, girl, you don't even know you signed your death certificate. You further perpetuated why you're going to get what it is you're getting. You think you're doing something, Miss Erica. Girl, you're getting ready to get it, honey. Honey, and the next thing you know, honey, it got to move in slow motion, baby. That war, he was wasting no time. He was like, he didn't even care. He was getting ready to try to do Candace right there at the table. Baby, he stood up, and when I tell you it turned into a scene from Scarface, baby, them Malones filled him full of lead, honey. Candace hit that deck, baby. You see Mitch's big long body stretch, just like jump under the table, stretched across her. Baby, you see Erica trying to get down, baby, but they was tearing war up. And then you see all the little street level thugs just being taken out. Pit pop, pit pop, pit, like dominoes, honey. They tore them up. Now go on down there messing with the mob, honey. With this old street bull crap, honey. You down there messing with the mob. You, they ain't even, they so stupid. They ain't even realized they was being set up. They ain't even realized that they were all in the line of fire. Stupid asses. Tore them up. Tore them up. I said, mm. Shot up Granny's restaurant, but the job got done. I was like, okay, good. Erica didn't get shot. She's sitting over there under a table. And I said, Get her out. Get her out. And it ended there. But I was waiting. I wanted Cand. I want, me personally, I want Candace to shoot Erica between her eyes. I want her to stand in her face, talk a little shit, and then pop her right here, honey. And crack her cranium open, honey. That's what I want her to do. After she hits her in her head with the butt of the gun. Bat! And then shoot her, honey. Because she deserves it all. She deserves to pay. But yeah, that Mitch, that Mitch got the job done. Yeah, everybody needs them a Mitch out of Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I think they're going to be together, too, after this. I do. I just got a feeling it's going to be Mitch and Candace, honey. And I don't know about what Charles is going to do. He's going to try to do his thing. But I think that Mitch and Candace is going to, he really ain't going to leave her alone now, honey. That's going to be it. But anyway. But that's in my world. That's what I want. But anyhow, um, that's that. Old Candace is back. Mitch saved the day. Honey, I told y'all. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll talk to y'all later.